civics class, Mr. Anderson gave his students their choice of topics on which to write reports. The reports had to be completed in two weeks. After considering the list carefully, Jim Chandler decided on the third topic. Should labor unions be required to incorporate? He thought this topic would be interesting to investigate. Naturally, such a report calls for a good deal of study. And this is the story of how Jim, who is no more fond of studying than most, makes it as enjoyable and profitable as he can by studying in the most practical way. The various students in this room have many ways of studying. And ways of not studying. Wasting time and effort. All of them could accomplish more with less effort by making better use of their time. Let's see how Jim uses his time. There are two weeks in which to write his civics report. Of course, Jim also has other studying to do. During study period today, for example, he has one hour, but he can't use all of this time for the report. So he decides how long to spend on each assignment. First, he has to get ready for science class this afternoon. Then the rest of the hour he can give to his civics report. Budgeting your time to make the most of it is one of the skills involved in study. Study skills can be developed, just as the skills involved in sports can be developed. By paying attention to them and practicing them, You can improve your skill in reading, for example, by paying attention to how you read. Consider the different rates of reading. First, there is skimming. You skim in order to find the parts of the book or chapter you need. You look over the material quickly, like this. The second rate of reading is rapid reading. You use this rate when you want to take in the large ideas in the material, what it is generally about. Third, there is careful reading. Reading slowly in order to understand thoroughly each idea expressed by the writer. In careful reading, you take time to stop and make mental summaries of what you've read. Finally, there is re-reading. Reading the same material again to fix it in your mind, to relate it to other things you know. The rate of reading you should use depends on the purpose of your reading and the nature of the material you are studying. You can develop these reading skills by paying attention to them and by practicing them, as Jim has done. Jim allotted to science are up. Time to start work on his civics report. This calls for skill in organizing his work so that he can make the most effective use of his time and effort. First, he writes a list of the things he knows about labor unions. But some of the things he's not sure of. So he decides to make another list, a list of the things he does not know. These are the questions he will try to answer through further study. His search for information begins in his civics book. First, he goes through the table of contents to find the chapter on labor. Then, 
He skims this chapter, looking for material about labor unions and incorporation. When he finds the section he wants, he reads it quickly, trying to get hold of the large ideas. Now he finds the paragraphs relating directly to his topic, and he reads these slowly and carefully. Then he goes back to reread the material, to make it his own. By the time the study period is over, Jim has made a good start in preparing for his report. He's accomplished this through careful planning. Two days later, Jim has some more time to give to his civics report, and he's comparing his progress with Steve. Jim hasn't found all the material he needs in his civics textbook, but he knows a way to get it. In the text at the end of the chapter on labor is a bibliography, a list of other books on the subject. This is an important reference for finding additional materials. The main source of such added information, Jim knows, is the library. He finds his material quickly because he knows the overall plan of the library. He knows how to use the card catalog in order to locate any book in the library. He looks under the economics heading for books relating to his report. He also knows how to use the reader's guide to find material in magazines and other periodicals. And he's familiar with the standard reference books for general material. Who's who for biographical data, the dictionary for definitions of words, and encyclopedias for general information on topics. Of course, sometimes you want more material than you can find in a library. Then where do you go? Jim decides to visit a lawyer who he knows can answer some of his questions about corporations. First-hand information of this kind makes a report more interesting and more complete. No matter what topic you're studying, book material can always be supplemented in this manner by personal interview. Later, Jim writes to the National Labor Relations Board. Government and private agencies are another source of information. By the time he gets the answer to his letter, Jim has completed his other research. He has located all the material he needs for his report. Today, he has allotted himself a full stud for outlining and writing the report so that he won't be rushed. Jim is no wonder student, and studying is not his favorite activity. But since he has to study, he has made in his study skills. We have seen some of these skills as he prepared his report. Skill in planning his time. skill in reading at the proper rate to suit his particular purpose, and skill in locating the study materials he needs without waste motion. All of us can learn to do more work in...